When you use Connect Events to hold a webinar, you'll often want to make the recording available after the event. Now, you could just move your recording to the content library, allow public viewing, and distribute the URL. But then you don't really know who viewed it. Or you could do the same thing, but specify which of your users can view the recording. But then only people who already have a user account can view it. If you want to make your recording available to a wider range of people and track their viewing of the recording, then I recommend using the same Adobe Connect event tools you used for the original event. What we're going to do is to create an entirely new event for the recording. Let's step through the process. After your webinar, the recording will be associated with the meeting room that was used for the event. In order to use the recording for an event, the first thing we're going to have to do is move the recording out of the meeting room and into the content library. So at this point, we've finished our event and moved the recording to the content library. Next, we want to create a new event. Why? Because we want to know who registers to view our recording. The recording is just as valuable as the original event, and tracking attendance is just as important. You might think that we could use the duplicate event function to create our new event, but that won't work. Why? Because the original event had a meeting room as its focus, and we want to point to a recording in the content library. So we'll create a brand new event. We'll use the same template as the original event. We'll copy and paste all of the data from the original event. We'll set the presentation to On Demand from the content library. We'll turn off Show in Catalog. I want to make sure Allow Direct Entry is turned on so people can view the recording as soon as they register. We'll set the end time to a year from now so the recording will be accessible for a year from the date of the original event. Okay, time to move to step two and select our recording. In steps three and four, if we're only expecting people who registered for our original event, we only need to ask the minimum registration info. Otherwise, we can include other questions. We can skip step five because we're going to send email to the registrants of our original event. On the other hand, if you want to send invitations to view the recording to additional people, you'll want to populate this list. In step six, you can decide which of these emails you want to send. We're going to send emails from the original event, not this one, so we're going to deselect all of these. In step seven, we'll disable campaign tracking unless you decide to send more invitations. You won't need it. Then we can click Finish and then Publish the event. Okay, we've got our new event for our recording. Now what we need are a couple of custom email templates for our original event. One for the thank you email and another for the absentee follow-up. So I'll select my default thank you email template and copy it. Create a private custom thank you email template. I'll edit this main text field and add the words, if you would like to review our event, you can access the recording here, with the word here being a hyperlink. What URL do I want to use for the hyperlink? I want to send the attendee to the registration page of the new event we created. So I'll copy that URL from the event information page and paste it in here. I'll click OK and then activate my template. One more, the absentee follow-up email template. I'll copy it to a private custom template. Then I'll edit this main text and add the words, if you would like to view a recording of the event, you can find it here. And again, the word here being a hyperlink to the registration page of our new event. I'll click OK and activate my template. Now, in my original webinar event, I'm going to assign these new templates to the thank you and absentee follow-up emails.
and click the Save button. By default, you have 12 hours to accomplish all of this because these two emails aren't sent until 12 hours after the original event. If you need more time, you can change that trigger time. By the way, I don't have to create a new custom email template for every event. I can actually reuse these templates as soon as the event that they're associated with is completely finished. All I have to do is change the URL for the link to the registration page. Make sure it points to the correct event and the correct page. Good. Now, 12 hours after the original event, these emails will be sent, containing a link to the registration page for our new event, the one with the recording. When our invitees go to the registration page, they can either register or click here, if they've already registered before, and simply sign in with their user ID and password. Their registration and attendance is tracked, so we know how they answered registration questions and exactly who viewed the recording. If you want to make the process even simpler for them, you can export your list of registrants from your original event and import them into the new event, approve them all in advance, and send them directly to the login page instead of the registration page. Sweet! Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you'll be notified of all of our updates, and if you need any additional help with Adobe Connect, you can contact us using the info on the screen. 